Hey folks, it's Sam, and I'm making this video about the eclipse, the lunar eclipse that's happening on set on September 17th. It's going to be happening um, on September 17th, about 7 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, you see this lunar eclipse is happening in the sign of Pisces. The sun ha will have just gone into Virgo, and that lunar eclipse is happening in the sign of Pisces in Purva Bhadra Nakshatra. Um, it's a very transformative time, of course, as all eclipses are. And we're in this eclipse cycle right now where we have to notice this eclipse diffusion and influence. Um, as you see here, that the eclipse is really where we build up kind of like a dimmer switch being, being turned on. Um, and so right now we're in the most powerful part of that uh, dimmer switch within that sort of two-week period on either side of the solar eclipse. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Please like the video. Clicking like helps a lot more than you know. It pushes the video higher in relevant video searches. Also, please leave a nice comment. Comments also help more than you know as it raises the video in searches. Many times with hundreds of likes, there are only a dozen comments and they can be disproportionately negative. So be positive. Let me know if you like this. Even just a few words really help. So subscribe, ring the bell to get notified of upcoming videos. Yes, please do so um, as it really helps. And let's get into this because this eclipse is happening in the sign of Pisces. Um, and again, what we can see here is that, um, you know, the moon has joined Rahu in the sky. Um, and Rahu is that north node of the eclipse. So it's the north node that's eclipsing and, and it's the lunar eclipse. So it's the moon that's getting eclipsed. Two weeks from now, when the moon travels around, we'll have the solar eclipse here in Virgo. Um, because the, then the south node Ketu will be eclipsing the sun. This will also be the beginning of a festival called Navaratri. So it's an incredibly transformative time. And so this full moon up here in Pisces as a solar, I'm um, sorry, as a lunar eclipse will also be signaling um, a very transformative time where you're going to be really challenged to let go and surrender your attachments in many ways, even your worldly attachments and your attachments to the idea that you are this citizen of the world who has, who ultimately, you know, is going to make this world work out for you, that it's all going to somehow work out and we're all going to somehow be redeemed here in the world. Again, that's a lovely sentiment. <coughs> Excuse me. But it's ultimately not going to work out like that. We have to let go of it all. We're, we have to let go of the body, the, the emotions, the ego, all of those things that we identify with. And Pisces is that sign where this becomes a very kind of visceral lesson. And we want to kind of escape from that lesson quite often. Um, and when we hit eclipses, we get these moments where that you know the orbit of the sun moon and earth line up in three-dimensional space like you see in this diagram here where the ascending node and the descending node line up and that's when we have the actual eclipses so again pisces is that sign of surrender letting go and you want to understand that the things that you have to let go of are just illusions because anything that you can lose, you never had to begin with. Again, that sounds like, oh, Sam's being a poet. I love that kind of thing. I'm not just being a poet, right? It's actually the truth that only that which is unreal can be taken away. But we have a lot of attachment to things that are unreal. And it doesn't mean that they're not real in the moment. For example, like emotions and feelings and, again, even people and situations that we have a lot of attachment to. Of course, they're real in the moment. Like, I'm I'm doing this kind of work. Let's, let's say, and by the way, for me, it's happening in my 10th house. So I'm going through a lot of those things with 
dissolving different aspects of my duties and responsibilities and all of that. I could be very lost in those things if I wasn't, if I didn't have like spiritual practice or something like that. I could get very lost in my reputation or recognition or, you know, some people would say I'm famous or some silly thing like that. But because people know who I am, that could be a big like thing that I have a lot of attachment to, right? If I defined myself by that, by my work, aside from any fame or recognition, but even just when we define ourselves by something external, we believe, it, you know, it doesn't mean that the thing isn't real. It doesn't mean I don't have work and duty and responsibility or maybe even fame or recognition, but it means that my me defining myself that way is not real. So if I have to change and transform and let go of that and let go of parts of it or whatever it might be, if I'm attached to it, then it's going to be painful. But if I'm not attached to any of that, and if I'm not defining myself by some aspect of life, then letting go of it isn't a big deal. And none, nothing I could let go of is anything I ever really had to begin with. All I had was the attachment to the idea. Oh, I'm this person doing this thing, and this is me. Again, you can think about relationships, for example, right? Oh, this person is some thing of me. Yeah, I mean, the person is real. The connection is real. But again, we have to always let go of certain ideas, even related to other people. We have them in some ways. They're ours in some ways. They're in a relationship with us. So we think, okay, you're my something. But it's also, they're not really our anything. They're there. They are existing for their reasons, right? So this illusion, this letting go is a lot of what Pisces is about. And that's a lot of what we're facing right now in our life. Everyone in some area of life. And by the way, if you want to know what this means for you, you can click below this video and join my YouTube member site, you can just join at the 999 level and you get these these updates, these monthly updates on the full moons and the new moons. Because if, again, this is happening in Pisces, but like if you're an Aquarius person, you're experiencing this eclipse cycle very different. It's the eclipse, this solar, this lunar eclipse is happening in your second house and the solar eclipse in your eighth house, for example. So it's very different for each person, right? And even furthermore, you know, I'm doing, as you see, even under my name on this video, it says Rahu K2 assessment. I'm doing these assessments now for people who want to really understand their nature. As right now, we're deeply in this light switch being turned on. And if you want to understand the lunar nodes in your chart, like when you were born, how, the, how you were captured by the nodal by the eclipse points, because whether we have planets join the node or whether we're having an eclipse or not, you have this aspect of your life, whether you know it or not. So you could get this Rahu K2 nodal reading now. You could get these insights. Um, and again, it's not very expensive. And I speak for half an hour straight about the nodes in your chart, the planets they're joined, how this totally unique, specific type of confusion, totally unique to you. Um, and again, based on what the planets are that are ruling the lunar nodes, based on the house and sign axis that the lunar nodes are in, particularly like the south node, we have a lot of confusion about because a lot of our hidden childhood blind spots, frustrations, and even kind of furious bottled up energy is tangled up in the south node. So this axis of obsession is unique for each person. So if you wanted to get that, you can click the link Rahu K2 assessment and go and get that reading as well, right? And I'll look at your chart. So again, it's a very powerful time to investigate these things. And again, as you could see, it's very important to know that we're really in the most urgent part of the eclipse influence. Just like on this on this diagram I have the nodal 
I'm sorry, the eclipse influence is like turning on a dimmer switch, getting it brighter and brighter and then more and more, you know, diffuse over time. So the month before and the month after is kind of like we're at about 66 to 100 percent strength on the month leading up to it. And then on the month after it decreases from that hundred percent down to about 66%. So those two months were like in that portion. And right now we're like on the two week cycle. It's the most focused. So the eclipse is in full effect now, and it will be until a couple weeks after. So again, as it, as it says here, you know, as you see in this, in this diagram here, um, where I have this full moon between this full moon and then the next full moon, that's the most focused part of the eclipse cycle. So this is in the nakshatra of Purvabhadra. And Purvabhadra is also very important. The nakshatra of Purvabhadra means earlier auspicious result. And it's connected to a deity called Ahi Budnya, I'm sorry, um, Aja Ekapada, which means the one-footed goat or the one-footed animal. And it's akin to lightning, which strikes the earth and strikes our experience, giving us an experience of what's transcendent. You see, there's very that early degree of Pisces where we leave this world of culture and people. Again, this illusion of Aquarius is that one day the world will be, it'll all work out and the world will be a beautiful place and we'll all sing and dance in harmony. That's the Aquarius idea. And the Pisces, and eventually we have to let go of that idea as well because we're in the earth, but not of the earth. So it's not going to work out in that context. And it's okay. The world is the way it is. But this day and age, we, we certainly have a lot of emphasis and energy in that area because Saturn has been there. By the way, as you can see, Please subscribe, ring the bell, and get these updates. Most people that watch these videos, are not most, but almost half of them are not subscribers. So subscribe and get these regular updates. I usually do a couple a week and to keep you informed. Um, and also, again, leave a positive comment. As I said earlier, that really helps. And also, again, like the video because that also helps with the search engines when they see a lot of people have liked it. But... This nakshatra of Purvabhadra, that one-footed goat that comes down and strikes our experience, gives us this glimpse of our true nature, of what's beyond. So we're not just, so we get this glimpse that we're not just this citizen of the earth, this person of culture of the earth, but we're actually this transcendent universal being, and that comes in through the nakshatra of Purvabhadra. So that's also going to be very powerful on this eclipse time. And again, you know, even what it shows, what it says here, it says your karmic story being written by you. And again, this is really what's happening. We're feeling this on a collective level now. We can really feel how the karmic stories are being written by us now, right? Culturally, globally, with our own choices, again, even with with, as it relates to elections and and other kinds of things all around the world. So again, Rahu shows that obsession that you have in this lifetime, the things you're like obsessed over trying to develop. And, Co and Ketu shows the major blind spots in areas where you feel certainty and that you're right, but where it's also, also that certainty is masking a deeper blindness. Like I said before, those sort of childhood connections have that Ketu aspect to it where this sort of deep buried energy is there. So again, we're in a, a we're in a K2 eclipse cycle as you can see here because the reason we're having the eclipse is because the sun is getting near one of the nodes. So the sun is getting near K2. So this is even though this eclipse is the moon being eclipsed by Rahu which distorts and explodes these ideas you know, again, this is the moon getting eclipsed by Rahu. So our emotions are getting eclipsed in this regard and being accelerated very quickly. So again, you can expect that things could really, you could have some kind of shocking revelations, kind of shocking you into reality of the things you're holding on to. And again, like I said earlier, those shocking revelations can come 
in relationship to wherever the sign of Pisces is. Like I said, for me as Gemini, it's happening in my 10th house. Shocking revelations compelling me to let go of certain things, which is happening in my life. And by the way, again, it's been happening since last December because that's when the nodes moved into this house axis. So you need to understand that when we have the eclipse, that's when the full effect of wherever the nodes are comes into play. And then we actually see the node because the node is there all the time, but we don't see it until we have eclipses. And again, in this case, the sun has joined K2, the south node. So just like I have in this diagram where I show you the way, the reason we have the eclipse is because the sun goes around and joins one of the nodes. That's when we have the eclipse cycle. And then at that time, when the moon is opposite, we have the lunar eclipse. Then when the, then when the moon comes around and joins the sun, we have the solar eclipse. And right now we're in this most urgent window, this, these next couple of weeks. It's like the dimmer switch is going from like 75% to 100 and then back down to 75%, like over the next month. It's that most urgent time surrounding this sun K2 eclipse, right? And, you know, as, as, as we see it here um, in the chart, and as it says here, you can see this sort of churning in this diagram here, this churning of the milk ocean is what Rahu and Ketu are related to. You see this serpent is being used as a, as a sort of like a tug of war. And the serpent is Rahu is, is, is uh, the serpent. And you have the, the, the Asuras, what are, what are called the Asuras, which are the, they're not really demons, but they're like eccentric, um, like sort of egoistic beings. And then you have the gods on the other side, the devas who are trying to keep everything normal. And these two are churning. That's, and Rahu and Ketu are like these, these eccentric forces that intercede in our life in order to shock us into a reality. That's what Rahu and Ketu are. And again, so Everyone has them somewhere in their chart when they were born. And these disruptive forces, again, they're not disruptive to be bad. They're disruptive to disrupt you out of your ignorance and out of your awareness or your attachment, like I said earlier. So, again, as I said, I'm doing these readings. If you wanted to get one Rahu K2 assessment, I'll obviously drop a link. But for the most part, this is what I wanted to talk about, this eclipse is affecting all of us. Um, and right now we're in the most urgent aspect of it for the, for this next month. So again, it's not just a day. This is one of the things that we have a lot of illusion around also. Oh, that eclipse day. Okay. Eclipse next thing. No, it's not, it's not like that any more than, you know, like a season is like one day, right? We have four seasons in a year, right? it takes a while, right? The season starts. The first day isn't like, okay, now it's summer, now tomorrow. No, it goes for a while. This eclipse is like an eclipse season or an eclipse month. And literally it's month because it's the moon. It's the moon moving here and straddling the solar eclipse, which is happening in a couple weeks. So this is really powerful stuff where you're really feeling this in your life, whether you know it or not. And again, if you want to get deeper insight into what it means for you, you can click below and register um, at that 997 level and get the monthly forecasts or, you know, and get these, get these lunation cycle forecasts as well. I do them on the full moons and on the new moons as well. And so again, this, Lunar eclipse is a full moon, and then the next solar eclipse is going to be a new moon. And whether, again, whether you know it or not, or are paying attention or not, they are affecting you in very specific ways. And they have been, wherever this nodal axis has been, it's been affecting you since last December. Been disrupting certain aspects. If you're Cancer, it's been ninth house, Leo, eighth house, right? Scorpio, fifth house. And 11th house. So again, 
these are this is how astrology is really working again whether you know it or not and i appreciate your time please as i say share the video join the channel and um i thank you for your time today thanks for watching don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to the channel